Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have an interesting example, the V2 rocket, and we're going to try to calculate various things. But let's see what we have here. We have a rocket that has a total weight of 32 pounds, which means the rocket plus the fuel together has a weight of 32 pounds. The engines give a force or a thrust of 60,000 pounds. Notice that all this is imperial units. We're going to do this problem later in metric units. The fuel burn lasts for 50 seconds, and the ejection of fuel is, or the gas of the burning fuel is 12 slugs per second. Now, slugs are the units of mass in imperial units. Notice we're going to assume that there's no loss of mass due to burning of the fuel. So we are going to assume that the mass or the weight of the rocket plus fuel remains at 32,000 pounds through the entire flight. And we need to find the velocity of the ejected gas relative to the rocket. We need to find the total mass or weight of the fuel burned. And we're going to try to figure out the maximum height gained by the rocket, assuming a vertical path. So let's start with part A. We need to find the velocity of the ejected gas. To do that, we need to use the, the definition of impulse, which is force times delta t. In other words, the amount of force by the engines for a certain amount of time. Let's do this for a single second. We also know that the impulse can be defined as the change in momentum, the change in p, which means the change in the product of the mass times velocity, and since the mass doesn't change, it's that much mass per second, we can say that's equal to m times delta v. We can then solve for delta v by setting it equal, m times delta v equal to f times delta t, or we can say that delta v is equal to the force times delta t divided by the mass. So in this case, the force is 60,000 pounds. The time would be one second. There we go, and the mass would be one, uh, no, not one, but 12 slugs. There we go, and that will give us the, um, the velocity in feet per second. So 60,000 times one divided by 12, which is 5,000 feet per second. So the ejection of the fuel or the gases, the burned gases, is 5,000 feet per second. Okay, next we want to calculate the weight of the burned fuel. So what we do is the weight total, the weight total of the burned fuel is equal to the weight per second times the number of seconds, times time. The weight per second would be 12 slugs converted to, of course, that would be the mg per second times time, like this because I want, to I want to make sure we understand what that is equal to. So that would be 12 slugs, 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 there we go. Multiply times 32 feet per second squared, because that's acceleration due to gravity in imperial units. Uh, we have that per second, so that would be per second. And then we want to multiply that times time, and the time would be 50 seconds. So that would be the weight in pounds multiplied times 50 seconds. And what does that give us? That gives us 12 times 32 times 50. That gives us 19,200 pounds. So weight total for the burned fuel is equal to 19,200 pounds. Now let's compare that to the original weight and you can see that it's more than half the total weight at takeoff. So actually, this assumption where we assume that there's no loss of mass is a gross simplification of the problem, but at least it helps us formulate it. Later on, we're going to take into account that we're going to lose mass as we're taking off. So finally, for part C, we need to see how we can reach the maximum height. To do that, we need to net force. So we know that we have the force of the engines pushing up, which is the 60,000 pounds, and then we have the mg pulling down. So what we can say here is that F net is equal to mass times acceleration, or acceleration is equal to F net divided by the mass. Now the net force is going to be equal to the force of the engines, which is 60,000 pounds, 
minus the weight of the rocket, which is 32,000 pounds. And we have to divide that by the mass of the rocket, which would be 32,000, that is the weight, divided by 32. And so that would be in terms of slugs. So we take the weight divided by G, that gives us slugs because, well, let's see, I'm looking for some room here to show you why we're doing that. So notice that the weight is equal to mg, which means that m is equal to the weight divided by g. In this case, that would be 32,000 pounds divided by 32 feet per second square, which is a thousand slugs. So the mass of the rocket with fuel is a thousand slugs. All right, so let's go ahead and figure out the acceleration. So we have 60,000 minus 32,000 divided by 1,000, which is 28 feet per second square. That's acceleration. Now, to see how much height it will gain before it burns all the fuel. So, H total, total is going to be height 1 plus height 2. Height 1 is the height gained by burning the fuel. Height 2 is the height, additional height gained by gliding to the maximum height before it starts falling back down. So H1 is going to be equal to 1 half GT squared. So G would be the acceleration to, oh well, in this case it's not G, we're not falling. We're pushing the rocket up at an acceleration of 28 feet per second squared. So it would be 1 half AT squared, which is equal to 1 half times acceleration times the time squared for 50 seconds. And let's see what that's equal to. So we have 2,500 times 14, which is 35,000 feet. So the V2 rocket will reach a height of 35,000 feet before the fuel is finished. Now, at that speed, well, how fast will it be going at that speed? Well, we can say that V1 is equal to acceleration times time, which in this case is 28 feet per second, for a total of 50 seconds. So that will be a velocity at that moment. It will have reached a velocity of 28 times 50 or 1400 feet per second. At that moment, it is subject to acceleration due to gravity. It will slow it down. So then you can say that um, uh, height two is equal to height one plus V initial in the y direction times time plus uh, one half g t squared. So it will have the original height, which is 35,000 feet. It will gain, well, let's see here. I'm going to call this height total. Is the height one plus the additional height gain by coming to a stop. V initial in the y direction will be 1,400 feet times t plus one half g t squared. But how do we find out how much more time it needs before it reaches maximum height? For that, we need the equation time in the air, and I'm kind of running out of room here, so let's just take a little corner here. So here we're going to calculate time in air. So it's going to be, uh, let's see here, time in air, that would be, uh, v equals v sub naught plus a times t. How's that? Because we don't know how high it goes, but we do know the initial velocity and we know the final velocity. So we say the final velocity will be zero, the initial velocity is 1400 feet per second, and the acceleration will be 32 feet per second multiplied times time. So the time in the air, t, is going to be equal to 1400 divided by 32. which is 43.75 seconds. Time equals 43.75 seconds. That's the height it will take before the rocket comes to a complete stop. Then we come back over here and we find out what that final height is. 35,000 plus initial velocity in the y direction, which is 1400, multiplied times 43.75, 43.75, minus half g, which would be half of 32, which is 16, 
times 43.75 quantity squared. All right. So we square that and we multiply times 16 and we make that negative and then we have plus that. So plus quantity 1400 times 43.75. That's double that equals. And so the final answer is as follows. So the total height, let's go over here. Height total will be equal to 35,000 feet. We ran out of fuel plus an additional 30,625 feet before it comes to a complete stop. When we add those two together, the height total is equal to 65,625 feet. And that will be the maximum height gained by the V2 rocket in case it goes straight up. Again, assuming no loss of mass and the fuel burn is 50 seconds. And that is how it's done.